in this step then, now that the level's just about done, we're going to make the lighting a little bit better and get it under control. And I'm gonna show you why we need to get it under control first of all. Uh, and I'm gonna do that by coming outside of my room and just staring off into the void. And then I'm gonna look back at my room. You can see it's all really dark and then it starts to get brighter over time. I'll just do that again, look. So look over here for a sec, look back and it's gone really dark. And why I've done that, why I've shown you that, is I'm just highlighting the fact that currently Unreal Engine is using auto exposure. So it doesn't matter what we set the lighting levels to really because it's just going to correct for them. So what we need to do is tell it not to do that or rein in the parameters of that. One way of doing that is if where it says lit up here, it's currently on game settings. If we turn that off and you can now see it's at a setting of EV1, this is now real dark which is what we want. This is kind of what the lighting looks like if you don't auto expose for it. So that's better. And we're going to bring it under that level of control ourselves. So let's just go back to game settings for a minute. And you can see now that lighting comes back up and we're going to control that with a post process volume. So we're going to go up here to create one. So it lives in volumes and it's down here, post process volume, and you can drag it anywhere. Now it's a volume because generally whatever effects you make for this happen inside that volume but we want this to happen everywhere so we're going to give it infinite extent so i'm just going to resize my um workspace a little bit and then i'm going to scroll down here and i'm looking for it's near the bottom let's see if i can find it here it is so under post process volume settings i'm going to tick the box for infinite extent so now it will happen inside this cube and outside it as well so now that i've done that i'm going to move the cube out to the side because it doesn't need to be in there. It'll just get in the way. But as long as I've got it selected, I can change the settings for it. So then what I'm going to do is find the exposure area of this. Where are we? So I'm just going to collapse some of this. So I don't need to be doing a lens. I don't need color grading. Don't need film. Don't need global illuminations or reflections or rendering features or film grain or path tracing. Hang on. Where is where's exposure? Okay, I got a little bit excited then. It's actually in the lens settings, my mistake, and it's in this exposure here. So third one down, exposure. And we're gonna tick the boxes for min and max EV100. And we're just gonna set the parameters for that. So I'm gonna set the minimum to one and the maximum to zero. And you see that it will now allow it to go between those two values. And we now get a much moodier scene. Now that we've got that level of control, it's a good time to dial those values in. So we're going to go into our folder up here. Let's just make sure I see what I'm doing. Into lights and effects and get a direct light. And we're going to change the intensity. So I am going to bring it up a little bit. Let's see where I want it to be. About there. So I've got it set to about 28. So let's just press play and see how that looks to the player. Yep, I think that's nicer. So now it's not overpowering. Um, it's it's pretty good. I think I might just take it a little bit lower. Let's try 25. Yeah, I like that. So it looks kind of moody. That's good. Okay, the next thing I want to do with that light then is I'm going to bring it down a touch. So I'm just going to put my snaps down to about 10 for this and just bring it down slightly. I don't want it to be hitting that ceiling, which... It's now not hitting, so that's good. And that stops those kind of really harsh highlights that we had before. But we've now got another problem if we press play. And that is that it looks like there is no ceiling. And that might be something that you want. That's absolutely fine. Um, but I do want the player to see that there's a ceiling there. And what we can do is use bounce lighting. So in real world, if you have lights shining down, it'll bounce and then illuminate back up there anyway. And that's currently not happening here. And we do that, or one of the ways that we can do that is through building lighting, and that will bounce the lighting around the scene for us. So we will do that now. The way we do it, and we're just gonna do a test one really, is go to build up here. And then the second option in that menu is build lighting only. And I'm gonna click on that now. And this can take different amounts of time depending on how big your level is, how many assets are in your level, what resolution you have, your light maps set to and how good your PC is. Now, luckily we've only got a few pieces. It's a small level, so it's not gonna to take too long. You can see that as I'm talking to you, this process is happening on screen. 
it's now almost up to 100%. It updates some stuff and it pops in. There you go. So I've now got um, bounce lighting on the ceiling. So if I press play now, hey, hey, we're good. We have now got our first level. Look at you. You've gone from knowing nothing to being able to make an entire level in Unreal Engine. Well done, you. So this would now be a really good time to save your work before moving on. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do file, save current level as, and I'm just going to give this a new name. So I'm going to call it ship level three begin, because this is now ready to begin. Uh, in fact, not level three, chapter three, chapter three begin, because this is now ready for when uh, we move on to the next chapter. So if you choose to download my assets so that you can work through it, you will want to uh, have that available. So that's available for you. You should save yours as well. One thing you will notice though as you save it is that it does discard the light build information. Who knows why it happens, but you might just want to build that again. So I'm just gonna click on build lighting and then we're good. So we have in this chapter brought in assets, looked at how we can add materials to those assets. We've conquered the move, rotate and scale tools. We've learned how to duplicate. We've imported lights. We've changed the properties of those lights. We've built lighting. We've done it all. We are pretty good at this. And we even, you know, try to get our head around things like collisions and stuff. So well done for making it through chapter two and get ready for chapter three, which will be coming up in the next step. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.